90% of birds are monogamous. They mate and bond and are together for life. I really like that about birds and I've known that for a while. It is not cliche or cheesy to want to have one person for your life. I want that. I pray to the Lord about a wife, a woman made for me, and I am the man and husband made for her, and the Lord wants us to be together and brings us together. Before in my life, right, it was just about meeting someone that you can have sex with. Let's just be honest, right? And I feel for kids nowadays. Have you heard of the internet? Have you been on the internet? Before knowing the Lord, I looked at pornography. I'm sure most of us have, right? Men and women, we're guilty of this. Have you been on the internet? So that is out of my life. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't want to try and work for the Lord and be a good and faithful servant and go, no, nah, he's going to be blind to this. There's no faking it with God. Even the thoughts of doing things, he's, he's like, I know you're thinking about that. So while it is hard being in this world single and not having a wife of my own yet, I pray to the Lord that, you know, this sparrow is connected with another sparrow and we can be monogamous together with God included in our relationship. I wasn't doing that before. I wasn't seeking God first and having to rely on Him. As a couple, I think, right, to be true Christians, we do have to put God first. And it makes sense to us because... Everything else follows after God. Seek God first and everything else will follow. Loving our, loving our wives and husbands and our family and all of our loved ones is a very, very close second. The Lord knows this. Again, the Lord knows when we're trying. He knows our hearts. He knows our minds. He knows our thoughts. He knows what's best for us. And isn't it sad, disgusting and disturbing, and it makes me angry that this world wants to destroy this. A man and a woman together, like Adam and Eve, like God planned, Adam needed a help meet for him. <laughs> this world thinks it's cheesy. This world's like, come on, get with it. Love is love. And it's like, yeah, pedophilia, that's love. Do you know what I mean? I use that as an example because it's an extreme that the average person would probably be like, no, no, that's a line where we can draw that line there, right? But I've seen this world, I live in this world, I'm aware of what it pushes and, you know, it's not about being all tolerant and you can get married and this is allowed. And once you realize God and his truth, you will want to do God's truth and live in God's ways because it's correct. We've been so brainwashed by the world, so tricked and fooled by the world, the world lures us in with its temptation and sin. It's very, very easy to just go, I'll just do what the world does. Who cares? It's not important. God won't know or see this. And it shouldn't be a fear thing of like, I don't want to act bad for God. It's about letting God down. He's done so much for us. And yes, he has done so much for us. Have you seen? Are you aware of what the cross represents? The greatest thing to ever happen in the world was our Lord's death, burial, and resurrection because it's life. It's eternal life with that. It's always important. It's the meaning of life. Maybe for a couple to realize that who God is, what he's done for us, to worship him and honor him forever because he's worthy, he's holy, he's righteous and true. He wants good things for us. He wants us to prosper. He wants us to be together and love our neighbor as ourselves. And I think he wants us to be good husbands and wives that put him first, help our family, help everyone in the world to realize that let's not leave God out of our relationships. Let's not leave God out of our marriage. Let's not leave God out of the world. You have to be a little bit rebellious and righteous to stand up for God in this fallen world. But let's keep doing that, brothers and sisters, until the day that we go home. God bless you, everyone. Thank you always for listening. Amen.